Right, so hello everyone and welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Rohit Sharma and for those of you who don't know me, I am from the customer support team. I've been with BMC for, for over 10 years now and I primarily support the AD product and services. So this is the first session that we are doing on AI Ops or BMC Helix Service Monitoring in SAS University. So we are going to talk about a lot of things in the session, but we won't go into uh, details of each piece. So we'll, this is just a basic introduction session to AI Ops. So the agenda is we'll first talk about what is uh, BMC Helix Service Monitoring or AI Ops. We'll talk about what service models are in AI Ops. What is event noise reduction and what is root cause isolation? So AI ops. So the term AI ops or artificial intelligence for IT operations, it was coined by Gartner in 2017. AI ops is a methodology for managing complex IT operations that optimize service availability and deliver by predicting uh, and preventing problems before they occur. It leverages machine learning, predictive analytics, and AI to automate, enhance, and improve business operations. So these are some of the features of AI Ops. Uh, monitor services. Uh, it continuously observes and tracks the performance and health of IT services to ensure they are running optimally. Predict service outage. It uses predictive analytics to foresee potential service outages before they happen, allowing for pro proactive measures. Build situation and event noise reduction. It aggregates and correlates events to uh, create meaningful situations while filtering out irrelevant noise. Uh, discover root cause and insight. It can uh, identify a causal events from hundreds or thousands of events to help us solve the issues faster. Remediate and automate. It, <laughs> it indirectly automates. I mean, there are uh, features on AI Ops which help you to automate responses based on common issues. We will just uh, see it in the demo as well. We'll talk about all these features once and everything we are going to see in the demo. So AI Ops are, uh, as we call it, service monitoring. So which tells us that service is the most crucial part of AI Ops. I would, I mean, from my experience, I would say that if you have a service well-defined in AI Ops, half of your job is done. Because at the end of the day, we are monitoring service and, uh, you know, that is, that is what we are doing eventually. So the creation of a service model is more is the most important part in, in AI ops. So a service, uh, what's a service? A service is a logical group of entities or configuration items that work together to achieve a comprehensive end to end business goal. A service model is a combination of different service. So a service model. You can say that it provides the domain related, uh, domain related context, which AI uses forward to aid in noise reduction, root cause analysis, and intelligent recommendation. So building a service and building a service model is the most crucial part of AI ops. We'll, we'll talk about it in, in a bit. So there are three types of services that you can create in AI ops, business service, technical service, and business application. So a business service is what the end users or customers use directly. A technical service is a service that is managed by IT. So IT manages certain services, core infrastructure services. Those are technical services and business applications are instances of those services. So when you go and look at a service in AI ops, you won't see a difference uh, by just looking at a service. If a service is a business service, business application or a technical service, it is how you, you know, uh, when you're creating service model, how you are uh, making those re relationship is where these classifications play a huge role. So if I talk about a common example, EPD, uh, the BMC EPD site is commonly used by our customers to download products. So EPD, if I have to create a service for EPD, EPD would be a business service. A technical service would be the core infrastructure which will be added in a service which my IT team is going to take a look at. And uh, various instances of EPD, let's say EPD prod, EPD dev, EPD QA, those will be business application. Now it gives you, it gives everyone everything in a single view. So let's say there is a problem with one of our database clusters due to which EPD service is impacted. So if the management wants to see what is the problem of this particular alert or event, they would see that it is impacting business service, uh, which is called EPD. If the IT teams 
what what is uh, the cluster that is failing they'll just take a look at the technical service and they'll identify which is the component uh, that is that is having a problem which needs to be fixed so it gives you a view in which there is everything for everyone now there are three ways you can build service models in in ai ops service blueprints uh, we'll, we'll talk about blueprints in a in a bit when we do the demo blueprints are basically templates that are used to define services anything that you create in bmc helix discovery is also visible as a service in ai ops and uh, for those of you who work on bhom there is you can create groups in bhom and those groups are visible as a service in uh, in in ai ops as well so let's let's talk about event noise reduction we we say a lot about ai ops that it reduces event noise so event noise is basically it is a term to describe hundred of uh, or thousands of hourly or daily notification and alarms from monitoring tools which are being sent to our operations team event noise reduction involves applying machine learning to histor uh, on on the historical and real time data to identify patterns and suppress events the events from same or different hosts are correlated based on the occurrence uh, message signature topology or the combination of these factors and these are formed into a situation so the when we correlate or when a uh, when ai ops correlate events it creates a situation so there are uh, three types of situations which is independent primary and similar situation and i'll talk about that in a bit but first uh, I'll just touch based on the event correlation. So, for those of you who worked on BHOM, there is a policy-based event correlation wherein you write a policy uh, in BHOM and it correlates event based on the policy. When AI ops is correlating event, you don't have to write any policy. The AI ML algorithms do it automatically. So, when they are creating situations, uh, it uh, it is it is done automatically. So, there are three types of situations: independent, primary. And and similar situations. So any situation that is created in AI ops, it is an independent situation. A primary situation would be, let's say there is a service and there are a lot of events, and AI ops has created three or four or five service for uh, for uh, five uh, situations for for the uh, for for those those events. And the service uh, the sorry the situation which will have the causal event, the main. Uh, event which is causing the problem that service would be classified uh, that situation will be classified as primary situation and similar situations are historic situations so suppose there is a situation that was created today and we closed it seven days down the line there is a same we, we see the similar set of event and we have created a situation so the similar situation will be the old situation that gets associated to to the new situation so that so it it is a way of uh, telling us that this is something that has occurred in the past you might want to you know figure out what you did seven days back to fix the issue so those is those those are what situ uh, similar situation is so root cause isolation it is again a very important feature of uh, of ai ops so it helps users with its uh, ai ml part algorithms to understand what is the causal event or what is the root cause of a certain problem so there could be uh, so let let's talk about the epd example as well so if the database goes down the epd service would go down as well and you'll see user complaining that we are not able to download the products and there will be a lot of lot of events generated because of that but the root cause of all of this is let's say that the database cluster is down so ai ml with uh, will is going to let you know that this is this is what the problem is once you fix the problem everything else is going to get fixed automatically so this root cause isolation feature is helping you to reduce the mean time to resolve issues and you know quickly identify and fix fix the problems and the last feature is is prediction uh, for any AI ops solution, prediction is is the most important thing, and we have prediction feature in our AI ops solution as well. So prediction again, it it uses ML uh, algorithms to spot problem in data, and it wants the the operators or IT team before the problem is uh, before the problem actually occurs. So it identifies pattern based on the historical data, and it sees that okay after 12 hours you are going to have a problem. And an event is created in BHOM with the uh, class prediction, so that everybody knows that okay, there is uh, we have identified that something is going to happen in next 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 12 hours. So this is about prediction feature. We'll we'll just see prediction in in the 
when we ch- when we do the demo as well so this is what i i wanted to you know talk about what are different features of ai ops and what are the terms that we are going to use in demo so let's just quickly uh, jump on on the demo part for now so yeah so this is where i have logged into uh, the ai ops console so as i said the very first thing uh, that we are going to do or which which is very important is for us to create a service now before we create a service uh, i'm going to talk about blueprints which is which aids you in in creating great service model so to create a blueprint you go to configuration and you go to manage service blueprint and you click here create service blueprint uh, just put a name here so you have to select a ci first i'll create a cluster blueprint so a ci is just to give you a base details of what are the different kinds that are available uh, you can journalize or or uh, edit it later on so i just quickly uh, create a ci sorry select a ci and it is going to populate the model and when i hit next it is going to tell tell us what are the different kinds that have been discovered for this uh, the ci already so there is a cluster and then uh, on the cluster there are several hosts so what what i'll do here is i'll add different things uh, different kinds as well i'll add a virtual machine i'll add couple of network interfaces and a network device so there will be a lot of virtual machines on host the host would have a network interface the network interface would be connected to a different network interface for a network device so this is what my blueprint right now looks like so we have a cluster it will have a lot of hosts virtual machines network interface and from the network interface there is a network device uh, it is it is connected to so i have created this blueprint or a model and when i'll use this blueprint on any cluster it is going to you know create a service model on its own so let us just see uh, yeah so there is one other thing that which i forgot to uh, tell so the cluster is going to be a starting point of just just a minute i think somebody is sorry yeah so th- there was a feedback that i'm going a little too fast so i'll slow down a little bit uh so this cluster uh so as i said this cluster is the starting point of uh, uh when when you're selecting or when you're creating a service model out of the blueprint a cluster is going to be the starting point of uh, of the of the service model so here you can uh you know apply some filters wherein you can notify the users that this is where you want to select a cluster so if you notice the blueprint that i am creating right now the blueprint the blueprint is is going to be created for a cluster uh, service so i'll just put a note here which is telling uh, the user or the operator that uh, we need to select a cluster and then a blueprint would be created so i'll just put a note for somebody who is using uh, the cluster and these are the attributes so uh the operator who is going to uh, use this blueprint to create a service they'll select a cluster name i'll just save it here and yeah that's it so i've defined the filter condition here as well and the next step is wherein you can verify if your blueprint is working fine or not so my blueprint is is created right now i can do a preview as well so i'll just uh, use a uh, regex to show you how this thing will be yeah so i've selected from uh from the available cis i've selected uh, anything that contains cluster or mcr in the name and it has created a blue uh, i mean it is giving me a preview what my service model is going to look, look like so uh there is a cluster there are hosts there are virtual machines as well there are network interfaces here and the network interface is being attached to a network device so this is how my uh, service is going to look like uh, when you create a service using this uh, blueprint so i'll just quickly save it
I'll close it. So once you create a blueprint, it is disabled by default. So you have to enable a blueprint after its creation. And uh, blueprint was saved, right? Click on show disabled. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, so this is my blueprint and it is uh, disabled right now. So I'll have to just enable it. And that's it. So my blueprint is enabled now and it is ready to use. So I'll go to services right now. I'll use this blueprint to create a service. So I'll just create a new service. I'll click here, put a name. So uh, the kinds are available. I'll just select the business service here. And uh, this is where I can specify which blueprint that I want to use. And uh, I have to select what are the nodes that I want to, or CIs that I want to use in my blueprint. Uh, so cluster and. So that's it. And I'll just save it. It will take a few seconds and uh, the service model will be created. OK, so uh, let's just go back. So there are few things that I want to talk about in service model, which is health indicators, events and health profile. But I'll just show you the service first and then we'll talk about these items in a bit as well. So this is. This is my uh, this is how the service model looks like, and these are all the CIs which are a part of my uh, service model. So there is one other thing. So if you notice here, uh, there are a lot of uh, virtual machines that are being, you know, uh, that are a part of my. Uh, uh, my service model which I've created using blueprint. So you can, I mean, edit the blueprint to filter out certain things based on the name as well. So uh, if I go to configurations again and I go to blueprints. Just do an edit. I just want to show you this feature as well that it gives you a facility to filter out certain. Uh, things based on regex as well. So let's say if I just want to ensure that only dev or QA uh, CIs are a part of uh, my uh, uh, service model, I can I can do that from here as well. So that is going to be taken care of. Uh, let's go back to our services. Yeah, so I'll just open. Uh, there are a lot of things in the services that that I want to talk about. So I'll just open a different uh, service on which uh, there are events and a lot of data so that we can talk about it. So this is a service which is which is actually actually impacted. So I'll just talk about what are different fields on this uh, service page. So at the top, you'll see the service name, the impact category, minor, critical, major. It is derived from the health score. If you just hover the mouse over here, you will see uh, how this minor is being identified based on the health score, the number of incidents that are being created, uh, the number of total events and the number of impacted events. <clears throat> so the total event is the count of. Uh, so let's say there are 10 CIs in in the uh, in our uh, service model and we have <clears throat> one event each for the CI. Uh, so the total event would be 10, but you can configure your service to filter out some of the events. You don't want uh, service health to be impacted for all the CIs. So you can filter uh, your service model so that the service health would be impacted just for a particular set of events. And those events are classified as impacted events. So this is the health timeline, which is which tells you that what is the health score over a period of time can go back up to seven days and here on the help timeline you'll see if there is any incident or event 
created uh, generated you'll see those on the help timeline as well and then there is this uh, the service model is being shown here if you have different uh, service models it will be in the service hierarchy if there is a situation we'll talk about situation as well uh, when are they created or what are the different criteria the situations are listed here the analyze root cause which tells you what is the causal event it is going to tell you uh, the the root cause or the causal event would be listed here and at the end it is service insight so this is a new tenant so there is not a lot of things that i have done here but if your service is pretty old and uh, you have i mean the service has gone through a lot of event situations incidents etc so those insights for the service would be listed here so there are other things that i want to talk about in the service now for example we we touched about uh, total events and impacted events i gave you an example that you can filter out those those events so let's see how do we do that so if i edit service it takes me to the service page which is, which is similar to what what we saw uh, when we were creating the service and there are three things at uh, three uh, things that you can do to this service from the top so the first one is uh, health indicators events and health profile so let's talk about the health profile first so this health profile it is also called as balancing profile so you can add balancing profile while building a service model so basically uh, let's say if you have a database service which uh, which is connected to uh, which is a cluster and connected to 10 different data uh, 10 10 database hosts and if there is an situation and um, if there is a problem with one of the uh, hosts uh, the service would be impacted but you don't want that if there is a problem with one host the service health score is impacted you want okay if if more than five hosts have problem only then i want my service to be impacted so those balancing settings you can do from the health profile so if I, you click here and then click on the service name <clears throat> you can create a health profile here based on whatever cis you have added there and at the end you would see that there is uh, based on percentage or based on count you can uh, i mean you can configure this setting the other thing is uh, it gives you uh, uh, the ability to control how the health score is going to be impacted as well so for now for every critical uh, event the health score will be reduced by 10 if you want this to be reduced by 20 you can make the setting here save it and it will be done the other thing is uh, which is event so what i was the example that i was talking about the event wherein you can create a uh, you can create event filter that okay so and so event would be would be uh, we i just want this these events to be considered while uh, forming uh, while while calculating the health score so you can do it from here you can create an event rule and uh, you can add a filter i'll just quickly show this one because we are, we get a lot of questions around the total event and impacted event so i'll quickly just show this example so here i am creating an event rule which says any host which equals abc so which is a non existent host only that that event coming from that host will be used in calculating the health score so we'll just check in a bit what what health score would would be like so i've created this event rule and then there are health indicators so health indicator what is uh, what is a health indicator so let's say you have a lot of cis in in your service model and there is a ci which you feel is quite critical and if there is any resource crunch on that ci you want uh, an alert to be generated now your organization policy says that whenever the cpu utilization would exceed 80% or 85% you'll get an alert but you want for those three or four cis the alert to be generated after 50% so that you know before it's too late so you can add those hosts uh, in the uh, in the health indicator the metric data would obviously come from behom but when you add those hosts here uh, let's say if i select a host this simulator host i select and uh, cpu 
and utilization. You can add a metric here. Save. And this is a, a health indicator would be created for uh, this particular host. Now what this health indicator allows you to do it allows you to create an alarm policy as well. So you can hit on this create alarm policy uh, button here and it is going hyperlink here and it, it is going to take you to be home and then you can create an alarm policy specifically for the hosts defined here. So this is again a very important part while creating service models as well. If you feel that there are certain CIs which are more important than others, you can uh, you know create health indicators for this as well. So this is how you, you create health indicators there. And uh, yeah, so we have created the event uh, filter as well. We, if you remember, I created it for the that ABC host. So I, when I save it and I close it, so if you notice, the uh, impacted event is gone. So even though there are situations, there are events there, but my service health score right now is 100 because I want uh, alerts that are to be uh, the alerts that are being generated. <coughs> Uh, that the alerts which are being used to create health score they are just for that ABC host and which is a non-existent host. So if I delete the uh, event rule in few seconds, my health score will again go back to 90. So we get questions from uh, a lot of customers about these event rules and uh, Health, uh, sorry, event rules and these uh, impacted events. And so just wanted to kind of show this as well. So it just takes a few seconds for the health score to go back to 90 again. Okay, let's just continue with, uh, with situations. We'll talk about uh, situations now. Yeah, so if you see, it takes a few seconds for the health score to come back to 90. And once it was deleted, the total event and impacted event was uh, was four again. So yeah, let's let's talk about situations now. So uh, as I told you, situations uh, it is correlation of event and it is based on occurrence, uh, message, signature, uh, occurrence, message, uh, signature. There is one other thing which I'm <laughs> forgetting right now. Uh, sorry, topology. So it, this is these are the four things based on which we are uh, we are correlating events to form a situation. So there is a situation that is uh, let's just talk about this service here as well. Just show the example. So if you see here in my service, there are a lot of uh, CIs. So there is an event that is generated for this CI. There is an event this is generated for this CI, and then there is an event which is generated for Pat Simulator. So there are at least three events or three impacted hosts, but there is only one situation that is that is being created. So we'll just talk about why is that, how is that happening. But before that, I'll just quickly want to talk about what are the different situation settings that are available in in AI ops. So situation configuration, as I told you, most of it is is automatic. So there is only one setting, or only one page where you want to, where you can actually set things for uh, situation, which is the occurrence part. So there are two uh, two time windows that you can config configure, uh, which is a correlation window and a situation stability window. So a correlation window is a window. Uh, between which uh, if the event comes between a certain correlation window, those events would be, uh, you know, uh, taken into consideration while forming an event. So let's say by def uh, so let's say right now it is five minutes, but if I set it to 15 minutes and there is an e so there is an event which comes at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. And after that, there is a second event which is coming at 8 5. The third event is coming at 8 14. So those three events would be formulated into uh, into a situation, anything that comes after 15 minutes, a different situation is going to be created for that. Uh, the second one is the situation stability window. A situation stability window is a window for which a situation remains available. Uh, so or or till after the situation stability window, a situation is sep uh, situation is saturated. So I'll it, it is uh, it can be a little tricky concept. So uh, the importance of this uh, saturation window or stability window is that let's suppose there is uh, there are two events which came for a particular CI where file system was 95%. And after two uh, after, 
after 10 minutes those events got closed and there is a situation that is created there already now you have set the situation stability window for 30 minutes now after 10 or 20 minutes if an event comes in for the same issue that happened 10 minutes back which was a file system problem the uh, the the new uh, the events will be added into the situation which is created for those closed events we are not going to create a new uh, situation because the situation is not saturated so it is for these scenarios where situation uh, uh, stability window comes into picture we will create a situation active for that amount of time so that if there is a recurring problem we can utilize the same situation and we are not creating multiple situation or we are not causing situation noise in that scenario so we, this is where these two uh, settings help and there, then there are some advanced setting about similar situation and if you want to the policy based situation to be shown here i'll, I'll not talk about this in this demo but these are the only two sit settings that you have to do for uh, independent situations so yeah let's just uh, see our service again and uh, yeah so I'll just remove the filters here so what I, uh, I think what we talked about was that there are three CIs that that are being impacted but there is only uh, one situation which is being created so let's go to be home and see what is uh, what do we see there so we see there is a rs situation underscore demo one which is a situation that is being created and two events are part of that situation so if i click on the number two here it sees those two uh, the events are being generated for those two cis and those two cis are a form uh, like we have correlated those two events into a situation but if you notice that there, there is there are two more events for this pat underscore sim one server and they are in the correlation window if you notice the time here it is we've just generated these events one minute apart so by occurrence they should be able to you know we should be able to create a situation for this but the uh, criteria that we have a second criteria that we have as i spoke about is the uh, signature as well so for uh, a situation to be created the signature uh, should be unique so if you notice the events here the two events that i created for pat underscore sim one they were duplicate events so the uh, signature was same so that is why a situation was not created so sometimes i mean we uh, we get some questions from uh, from customers as in why is a situation not getting created for these uh, even though the ci is same why are you not creating a situation so in that scenario we usually check if the signature is unique or not now i'll just go back to the service again <coughs> yeah. okay, let's stay here the other question is that okay you have not created a different situation for these two but why since for the for the situation that that is created this is being created for two different hosts so they are not same host they are two different hosts why have you created a situation combining two hosts here but why why are these events not added in this uh, this situation we understand that uh, for these two events the signature was same but this signature was signature is different for this because that is i mean you have created a situation why are you not adding these two events in this situation now in that scenario the important part which i talked about earlier as well uh, topology comes into picture as well if you talk about business the the service model these two uh, cis are connect are correlated so there is a direct relation in the service model this is not related to this so even though they are part of the same business model uh, sorry service model uh, if a situation gets created for this it would also be impacting this service but we will create two different uh, situations because they are not topologically related so this is again a lot of times we uh, our questions is being asked why is why are two different situations being created for uh, CIs which are a part of same service the reason is because there is no topology relation so what we usually do is we go and go into the service model and see if there is a relation or not and if the relation uh, is is not there we uh, we create two separate uh, situations 
yeah so that is uh, yeah that is all about situations so i'll quickly go to the prediction part so unfortunately i i do not have any prediction to show you right now because uh, so what what happens is uh, there is so for for prediction to be generated the prediction is being generated for a service and that service should have a ci being added as a health indicator so a metal data is being generated for that particular ci and based on the historical data ai uh, ml algorithm decide that okay after 12 hours the service uh, i mean this uh, the health indicator might breach threshold and that is when the, uh, it creates a prediction so it creates a prediction which is shown here and a prediction event is being created in behom as well so i i don't have the data right now to create a prediction it is not visible right now but i was able to create one couple of days back i'll just show you the screenshot this is how it it is going it is going to look like uh, the service name would be listed here as well the metric would be listed here as well you can always you know severity define as well uh, the impact uh, is is going to be listed here as well and it is going to show you the ci name here as well so this is how uh, a prediction is going to look like and uh, once the prediction uh, is created event is automatically generated in behom as well with with the class prediction so i don't have uh, uh, the data right now to to generate a prediction but this is basically how it is going to look like so you don't have to configure anything the only requirement is that you need to have a service model with a health indicator that's it and if it is in place uh, if there is a potential breach uh, we we detect a potential breach in the next 12 hours we are going to create a a prediction uh, we are going to create a prediction uh, pre prediction event in behom uh yeah so the last thing i just want to talk about is the the overview page i i wanted to keep it at last because there are a lot of things which we have talked about which which are listed here so the total events uh are listed here for all the services which are in, available in behom total anomalies if there are any anomalies the number of incidents so again uh, so this the the total number of incidents we are getting from the info event that that gets uh, created in behom so it is not directly coming from itsm so uh, i know i've not talked about intelligent automation but you can use intelligent automation to uh, if there are uh, to integrate behom with itsm so that whenever there is an event in behom a corresponding incident uh, is created in itsm and then itsm sends back an info event to behom so based on the info events that are there in behom we are calculating the total number of incidents the mttr is again uh, based on how soon we are uh, resolving those events and incidents the noise reduction is again based on the number of events and how many situations that we have we have created and uh, what else top 5 services are listed here and uh, the top uh, five situations are are also also listed here as well and you can go back up until yeah yeah you can just configure it till whatever time you you want so this is all i wanted to talk about in uh, in in this introduction session i know there are a lot of things which uh, which i have not talked about especially when when we are creating these service models you can create a lot of complex service models but i just want to give a brief introduction of what uh, what blueprints are and how how you can create those service models there is a lot of useful things that you can do with the similar situation as well there is remediation as well actually i have not talked about remediation i can you know use this opportunity to show it show it to you here so if you go to situations uh, one of the things that i talked about was that it offers you remediation capabilities as well so the remediation part is being taken care of by intelligent automation uh, you have to write the auto uh, the automation here but it is visible here so if you want to you know if there is an automation that is created and we identify that you can use this automation then this trigger automation is automatically populated or you can create a request one here as well but that is that is a whole different beast when we talk about ie i won't talk about this right now but i just wanted to show you that uh, the remediation option is is also available here yeah so this is this is all what i wanted to talk about i'll 
just uh, take a pause and in, in case you have any questions uh, you can you can let me know i have john o'toole and shreya on on the call as well so in case i am not able to answer i'll have those two assist me in answering any any questions that you have If no questions, then uh, Rohit, we are good. Any anyone have any questions on this? Okay, I will consider this as no. Um, so Rohit, anything else you would like to show, or uh, we are we are good with this now? Uh, no, that there is nothing. I mean, the self-help section is there, uh -huh. uh, but mm -hmm. I know I, all of us know about this as well. So we have created a lot of the support team has created a lot of webinars and videos as well. So you can access all of the content from here. Uh, I think me, Shreya, uh, I mean, we have done at least two or three webinars. So there is a series that Samantha Amen does with, with Yaron, those uh, which is actually related to AI ops. So those uh, videos for those webinars recordings are also added there. So a lot of content has already been created. I know I did not talk about talk a lot about similar situations and uh, those so there is a video that I've created, which is which should be somewhere here as well. 